Hi, everyone. My name is Martina Bex, and I am the primary author of the SOMOS curriculum. I am here tonight to talk with you about how to get started using SOMOS, New SOM, or SUMOS, or Spanish, French, or Latin curriculum. I have a bunch of questions that were submitted ahead of time, and I'll be working through those. And in the meantime, if you are here live and have a question, I would love to answer it. The only thing that I always have to figure out is how, uh oh, uh oh, now I've just done that thing where, mm -mm, I've just done that thing where I, I went, I turned that on. So I've just got to make sure I can see the live chat. So if you are here, please drop a comment so that I know you're here and that I know where to look to see your comments and questions. Oh, I saw a little thumb, a like thumb go up. So that's good. That's a good start. So tell me hi, tell me uh, where you're watching from. And uh, if this is your, if you are going into your first year using uh, one of our curricula, or if you're, you've been doing it for a while, um, if you've already started school this year, or if you're a going back after Labor Day person like me. <laughs> Thank you, Paulina. So hi, hi, hi. So many familiar names. Hey, Johanna. And let's see, Andrew, Jill, welcome, welcome. Okay, so uh, now that I am confident that I know what the heck is going on, I am going to just start answering questions. But I'm gonna prioritize your questions. So please, if you have a question and you didn't submit it to the question stock, or if you did, drop that in the comments and I'll try to be monitoring that. Yay, I'm so glad that we've got some first time folks. Yeah, it's okay to be a little nervous, Carolina. That's part of, it's, uh, you know, I'm, so I, I homeschool my kids. This is our third year. I didn't think that we were gonna be doing it forever. I thought it was just a pandemic thing, but it turns out I actually kind of am loving it. So I am gonna be a, a tutor, but a teacher for some of the homeschool classes this year. And it's my first time with new teaching curriculum. And so I'm feeling a little bit of what you're feeling, like something was given to me and I've got instructions and they're good instructions, but it still is like, ah, it's, it's uh, yeah, I feel nervous. So um, we start next week. Um, so yeah, I can relate. So I, my, the first question that I am going to answer is I would like to know how to grade the assessments. Are there rubrics? Can I find what I need in the curriculum? So the first thing that you'll find is that there are no assessments in unit one of level one in any of the curricula. And we did that strategically. There is a note about it in the curriculum in the lesson plans, you'll see a note. But basically the first unit only lasts a few days. It just really doesn't make sense to assess students based on what they can do in the target language when they've only been exposed to the target language for a few days. So we do have some really simple assessments that we bring in in the second unit, but in the first unit, there isn't anything. All of the rest of the units in SOMOS will have assessments that come with them. You'll find writing assessments, you'll find listening assessments, and you'll find reading assessments. Not all of those will be in every unit. The writing assessments all have super clear, easy to grade with rubrics. They are based on actful, um, actual performance descriptors. We know that whenever we are assessing our students' performance in the classroom, we're assessing just that. It's performance, not proficiency. Proficiency is what um, students can world across contexts. And performance is just looking at one snapshot in time in a specific context. And what you'll find is that your students often are going to score very high on the assessments in, in the curriculum because students often perform higher than their proficiency level. So within the context of the classroom, working with the language, of course, I've got to fly, <laughs> um, working with the language that you've been working with every day, they're going to do great on the assessments. And that's good. There's no research that shows that low grades on assessments motivate students to work harder. Um, but 
what is motivating the research shows is success. So we want to really encourage students um, and celebrate what they can do. We're not trying to give them easy grades, but we're trying to celebrate what they can do. And when you're focused on acquisition and communicating with students, they can do a lot um, really early on. Terry Waltz talks about micro fluency. So they present as extremely fluent just with a very small set of vocabulary. Actually, that's in a I was just looking, I reference this book all the time, TPRS with Chinese Characteristics by Dr. Terry Waltz. I love this book, um, but that's where she talks about microfluency and she talks about a lot of other things. I reference her all the time in the curriculum. Um, let's see. So again, if, uh, so, okay, that was, uh, so those are the, the writing assessments. Reading and listening assessments are also in the curriculum. There is a rubric, an interpretive rubric that you will see in many of the units. We're actually in the process of overhauling all of our interpretive assessments. We have a rubric that is included with the curriculum. You'll find it in unit two. And we recommend using that rubric to, uh, to evaluate all of your students' listening assessments. And um, so that is provided. However, what you'll find is that as you get further on in the unit, sometimes the questions on assessments, you might give your students the assessment and look at the rubric and think, this doesn't really seem like the rubric doesn't really match the questions. Like, how do I use this rubric to put a, assign a grade to whatever my students responded? And that's because the rubric came second. So now we're in the process of going through and just updating all of the questions to make sure that it's really easy for you as a teacher to use that rubric to evaluate your students. You can you can do it, um, it's, it's not a problem, but we just wanna make it really easy for you. And so you'll see in unit two, for example, that there's a grading guide that comes along with a rubric and it'll compare, it'll take the questions and it'll say, if your students missed this one, this is what it would be on the rubric and it'll tell you how to grade it, um, or at least give you some ideas. We can't go through all the situations, but it'll be a good starting point. So assessments are in SOMOS. The only thing that's not in SOMOS are midterms, finals, those big cement semester exams. And the reason for that is everyone works through the material at a different pace. And so um, there, there is no one right spot to be at the end of semester one or at the end of the year. And so if we were to publish an official midterm or final that would communicate, they would have to go along with um, the, uh, a certain, you know, it would have to follow a certain unit and we don't want to, uh, communicate that idea that there's a correct spot to be at at any point during the year. There's a lot of examples in the collaborative drive. Uh, and there's also a bunch of different examples on my blog. So you might be able to find one that's a perfect fit for where you end up at midterm or final or whatever it is. And, um, that's great. And if not, you can adapt something that's already there. Speaking of the collab drive, that was one of the questions that we got. Um, it is referenced quite a bit in all of our trainings. So any of our, if you've done the uh, SOMOS Launchpad, which is a free training tool that Alicia Cardenas, our director of training, created last summer. And then, um, oh, it's, I think it's called Step Into SOMOS. It's a, it's a, it's a more in-depth self-paced training tool also created by Alicia that's on my blog and I'm happy to provide that link um, but that tool you can get 15 hours of professional development credit you'll get a certificate and you can also choose to um, to enroll for a one graduate level continuing education continuing education course so that's a really good option if you haven't already seen that I would definitely recommend checking those out and I'm happy to provide the link if you need it Magdalena asked, is Pobre Ana part of the SOMOS curriculum? And if so, which unit will Pobre Ana show up? It is not. Pobre Ana is a book published by a different company. And um, we do recommend using novels with our curriculum. Uh, what teachers usually will do is they will get to a certain unit of SOMOS and then they'll take a break from SOMOS and they will teach a novel as a unit and then come back to SOMOS. And that is what I did when I was teaching. I taught um, El Nuevo Houdini um, at the end of the year, and I taught Esperanza at the end of the year. And so many great novels have come out since then. So there's tons of different choices. We do provide a few ideas about when you could teach some novels at the bottom of our curriculum map. 
So um, the curriculum map, I believe it's bit.ly slash somos one map. And at the bottom of that document, we're not saying that novels to teach with the curriculum. We're just saying that those are novels that some people have taught with Somos. They are novels that I like, um, that I find fit well with Somos, but there's a lot of other ones too. And we give suggestions about what unit you might teach them after in Somos. And that is a largely neglected list by me. Also, one of these years, I will take some time and, and add some new ones to that list because there's a lot of novels that I love that aren't on there. And also you might like novels that I don't love and they could be on there too. <laughs> um, so Paulino asked if I could talk about the difference between Somos and Somos Flex. So, oh, thanks, Megan. Um, Megan, who is the project manager um, with us, she just dropped the link to the self-paced training. So I talked about the launch pad and I talked about the step into Somos um, or the summer Somos challenge. I forget the name. Anyway, it's a met blog post that she shared. So Paulina said difference between Somos and Somos Flex. Maybe uh, let me know in the comments, do you have Somos, Somos Flex, or both? Um, I would love to know. So Somos is the, we call it the Somos, and we call it the original Somos curriculum. So if we're trying to differentiate between Somos Flex and the original curriculum, then we'll say the original Somos curriculum. Um, but also if we just say SOMOS, we're usually referring to the original version. It was designed for teaching before the pandemic when teachers were in the classroom with their students and life was normal and you could have your students work in groups together and share materials and breathe the same air and life was grand. And then um, the pandemic happened and teachers were returning to school in the middle of it. And we knew that, well, returning to school and returning to online instruction, and we knew that the original SOMOS curriculum wasn't going to be good enough to fit all of those different scenarios. So we worked extremely hard for a little bit, I don't know if it was a year and a half, and we created a second version of every single one of our units. That curriculum is called the SOMOS Flex curriculum, and that curriculum provides uh, daily lesson plan ideas for this is what you do if you're teaching face to face with your students in the classroom this is what you do if you are teaching online like you're at home on your computer and your students are at home on their computers this is what you do if you have students who are working at home online at their own pace but you're not synchronous with them um, and this is what you do if you have students that are stuck at home with no internet access and they're still supposed to be doing coursework, we've got print packets for you. So Somos Flex aligns all of those things together. So it says on any given day, this is what all of those different groups are doing. And we cut out all of the activities from the curriculum that involved singing, because a lot of schools were like that, the, the sending those water droplets out into the air through song is not safe. So we got rid of singing and we um, changed anything that involves students moving around, sharing materials, being in the close proximity to each other. So there's a lot of adaptations. The Somos original curriculum is the better curriculum. It is much richer. There is more culture in it. Culture in it. There are more activities. It is more fun. <laughs> um, the Somos flex curriculum is more structured. It's easier to implement, um, and there are more texts. There's more, um, I, I can't say more content, but there's more stories in it. And there's a few specific tools in the Somos Flex curriculum that teachers, even that are using the original curriculum, are still bringing in. So like that print packet that we had, if you are teaching the Somos original curriculum and you have kids that are going to be absent for five days or two weeks or a month, if you have Somos Flex, you can just give them the print packet from that to catch up on. Um, one teacher in their question, they said, how do you teach with Somos when you're very introverted? The songs and stories are not something that I feel very comfortable with. And um, that's something that I've heard a lot. Um, I am, am myself, you know, I wrote this curriculum as I was doing it with my own students and I love singing with my students. I loved creating the stories 
And now there are so many different kinds of people that are using it that we've had to come up with ways to adapt things because we want um, the, the strategies are solid and there are ways to adapt them for all different personalities. And we're trying to make that easy for you. So one of the really easy things that you can do um, if you don't love story asking, um, which is the process of co-creating stories with your students. And again, even that can be like high energy or low energy. We have a lot of tips for that linked in every unit of SOMOS. Um, uh, but the tool there that you can use is the story builder. So in every flex unit of the curriculum, there is a story builder and they are like interactive slideshow presentations that you can walk through with your class or that your students can walk through on their own to um, kind of create a story by choosing options. It's like a choose your own adventure style thing. Um, you can buy the flex unit and that comes with it. We do also sell bundles of just the story builders. So you can't buy a story builder on its own, but you could buy like the story builders for, I don't exactly remember the breakdowns, but like the first nine units um, to save some money. If you're like, I want that, but I don't want the full flex curriculum, but really you do want the full flex curriculum. And then yet another option that we have, um, Paulino Brenner has created an amazing tool. Um, it's called the Story Builder Plus. And he, we have, oh gosh, Paulino, I think we have four and we're working on five um, right now. Or maybe the fourth one's almost done and then we're working on five. But it's a, it ta he takes the Story Builder, he puts it in forms, uh, in Google Forms, and students can go through and create their story. And then at the end of it, they get to watch a video um, where they see the, all the story slides going through and they hear Paulino telling the story and they can get that email to them. So it's a really great way to layer in some audio input um, and just fun because Paulino is the best. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the difference between Somos and Somos Flex. And if you're feeling introvert, if you are introverted, um, check out the story builder um, and then some other suggestions in the how not to ask a story, I think is the name of the link that you can look for in the curriculum. The songs, you don't need to do the songs. I mean, Los Poyitos Dicen, it's amazing. Um, it's so fun. It's such a bonding experience. But if you don't like singing, you don't have to do it. There's nothing in the curriculum that you absolutely have to do. Um, there's so much content in there that um, no matter what unit you are in, if you're doing a majority of the activities, your students are going to have enough input to keep moving forward with the curriculum. We do also have the Garbanzo Spanish podcast now that has Los Poitos Decent in it. Um, again, you don't have to do that, sorry, but it's so fun. So um, you can play the podcast and let Paulino do the singing for you. Um, okay, so I am scrolling back up. Thanks to everybody who's um, sharing links. How long, so Jill asked, how long do you think approximately it takes to get through one unit? I only have my students once a week for 30 minutes. Yes, Jill, we talked, uh, I talked to Jill during um, stay in after during teacher appreciation week. Um, and I wanna make sure I gauge appropriately. I know it's not science, but just an estimate. Yeah, so um, honestly, once a week for 30 minutes, it's going to take you a good bit to get through a unit. And what we usually recommend for teachers that are doing that, and I can't remember, Jill, if you do homework or not. It's we could give a deck, give different recommendations based on whether or not your students are expected to be doing work outside of class time. But if you really only have the 30 minutes per week with them, then um, it's better to just focus on the stories and maybe not spend as much time with the cultural content in the curriculum because it just takes draws things out so much and you want to get a lot of new words within into your students and so by moving through units a little bit more quickly you can um and jill i we i can have one of the mentors follow up with you christina baka in particular would be great um to check in with you with that question so i'll have her do that i see a lot of both so that's great and then so most originals too yeah both someone's and flex. Oh, I'm so glad your your district purchased it for you, Tony. That's uh, you know we really try to advocate for um, getting your districts to buy. And I know not every district has the funding, but man, you can make a case because this is a one time purchase. Um, as uh, it is, uh, I was well, it's a one time purchase for your district for you. 
And if they want to be able to transfer it to another teacher, there's a small fee that they can pay on top of that. And then they really can have it forever, even if you leave. Um, and so for less than a thousand dollars, they can have a complete curriculum forever and they don't need to buy any books, any additional materials, uh, just paper to print on unless you go to the paperless activities. Um, so Brittany asked, oh yeah, I have both and started unit 13. Brittany, I would say, so the vocab is different in flex and regular. Is that typical? It is not typical. There's a few units that we are reworking and unit 13 actually has been the bane of my existence this summer. It's been the thing that's been hanging over my head. It's been almost done forever. So unit 13, um, we already did unit 16. We, re, we chose new vocabulary for that unit while well, we flip-flopped 15 and 16, choose, chose new vocabulary for the um, Abuelas de la Plaza de Mayo. Um, so that's already done. That's been changed. And if you haven't, if you don't have the new version of that original unit, download it. And then unit 13 is another one. Um, and Brittany, that, I mean, it should be done uh, within a couple of weeks. So um, if you'd like, I can probably send you some unfinished materials, Brittany, if you want to email info at comprehensibleclassroom.com, um, if you'd like to um, have something that's a little bit more uh, aligned between the two. Um, both, yeah, the story builders really, they, I, I, I mean, I think that the pandemic obviously was, uh, a, a lot of the instructional stuff was just really hard, but it forced us to come up with solutions to, um, big problems and those solutions, those problems existed all the time and just not in such a big way. And so things like, what do you do when your students miss class or what do you do if you're introverted or what do you do on a day that your voice is not working and you were going to be asking a story. Um, now we have those story builders that we can recommend and we're really, we're really pleased to be able to do that and provide those things for you. Okay, so Orlando said taught that he taught um, Berto y sus buenas, buenas ideas after unit 20. Oh, after unit 10. <laughs> yeah, I was, that is a, that's a pretty easy um, novel. Yeah. Um, any suggestions for an eighth grade Spanish class that already had a year of traditional teaching? Yeah. So I would say if your kiddos are coming to you and they have only been in a traditional class, so you're, they had one year of Spanish and it was traditional, start at unit one and honestly don't even plan to move through it more quickly. The kind of language that they're going to be getting um, through the SOMOS curriculum is completely different than what they got from a traditional curriculum. And I say that, um, I'm, I'm not, I don't mean that in any kind of like a derogatory way. Like that was my experience. I switched partway through, um, well, toward the end of, um, a year of teaching and the kid, the language that my kids had, even after two years of Spanish. So I had kids that were at their, the end of their second year of Spanish. It just wasn't useful when we switched to storytelling. So I would say start with unit one and maybe you'll go more quickly than your year one students, um, but maybe you won't and that's okay. Whatever language they're getting through it is going to, um, is going to be helpful for them. They're going to be growing in proficiency um, even if they're not starting at, a, I don't know, a more advanced point because of their, their year. They'll probably have a wider range of vocabulary that they'll bring into the stories. Um, I can share a link to the story builder sets, um, Sandra. I'll add that um, afterward unless somebody jumps in ahead of time. Wink, wink. Um, and does that. But yeah, I can I can follow up after with you as well. Oh, and Ava said, start at the beginning. Yes, it will be so different. I totally agree, Ava. We are tracking. Um, the story builder plus forms, those are separate. So we only have a few of those available, the things where it's a Google form and um, there's the audio and the video integrated. Um, those are separate from Somos or Somos Flex. Those are each their own standalone thing. Oh, and Orlando says, see, we're all tracking. We're all, yes, we have a resounding start at the beginning. Um, the story builder plus, no, we don't have it for French, unfortunately, Lynn, because we don't have a Paulino that um, speaks French. So it uh, that's that's all him, honestly. We have story builders, just not the plus version. No homework, yeah. 
Okay. Jill said no homework is a given. Yeah. Jill, let, let's connect. Um, I'm going to make sure that you connect with Christina to, um, to, to get the support that you need in making those decisions about how to tackle that once a week, 30 minutes deal. Okay. Let's see. Brand new to teaching in a public middle school. Don't know if we have to buy a budget to buy the whole thing. What pieces would you recommend to really launch into CI this year? So Beth actually, um, well, convenient. So we have a sale this week. Um, it's going to be Tuesday and Wednesday. It's Teachers Pay Teachers Annual Back to School Sale. So they always do one at the beginning of August for people that go back early. And then they do another back to school sale at the end of August for those of us that go back in this last week of the, the year or after Labor Day. And what I would recommend is just get the first bundle. So we sell each SOMOS unit individually. We sell it as all of the units for, for SOMOS 1 or SOMOS 2. And then we also sell small bundles of like units 1 through 5, units 6 through 10. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I would just recommend getting that first one. And honestly, it's probably going to get you through the first semester. So that would be right, my recommendation if you can't get district funding right now. And if you get it this week, you'll be able to save um, up to 25% if you remember to use the coupon code, which is BTS bonus 22. You can look at your email for it, or you can check my blog and there's all the information about the sale there. Um, and Jill said, oh, I use El Moon and Tusmano so much. Yes, so that's our news publication. Um, that's totally separate from SOMOS. I know that we have so many resources and it can be really confusing and overwhelming if you're new, but we have the, our curriculum. And then a separate publication that we have is bi-weekly news called El Mundo and Tusmanos. I know, Jill, you've been using it for a while. Um, and actually, I'm going to be sharing a video um, highlighting some of that. Tomorrow, it's an annual subscription, so you can, um, this year's subscription is $100. Again, you can get it on sale this week for $75. By the end of the year, you will have 100 different news stories written at three different levels of text complexity, so 300 different articles. You'll have hundreds of activities to go along with them. We have interactive stuff, tons of things, but that's totally separate from SOMOS. Some teachers use it with SOMOS, and a lot of teachers that don't use SOMOS use El Mundo and Tusmanos, especially with upper level kids. Um, teachers have found that that's really a useful tool for levels three, four, AP, and if you teach um, heritage classes as well. All right, starting my first year with Somos. Oh, I'm gonna jump in with Los Poyitos season. Any suggestions of how to incorporate? Shoot, I don't know the end of your question. I'm gonna have to see if it's down there below. I'm gonna come back to that, um, Sandra. I mean, so just with Los Poyitos y Sen, the biggest thing that we hear all the time is I teach high school or I teach college and I just really don't think the kids are going to be into it. They will be into it. Just trust me. Do Los Poyitos y Sen. Obviously, we already talked about if you're an introvert and you don't feel comfortable with the singing for that particular song, you can pull in the Garbanzo Spanish podcast. But if you really don't feel comfortable with the song, don't do it. But if your concern is that the kids won't be comfortable they'll be comfortable. They'll love it. It'll be a thing. Just roll with it. Okay. So let's see what else. Do, 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 do. Okay. Deskless question. I know kids will want vocab reported somewhere. How do you handle that in the classroom with de deskless? So what I've seen a lot of teachers do, I was not deskless. I liked desks in my room. Um, although I would have been very open to trying deskless. It wasn't really a thing yet while I was in the classroom. So that's one thing I'd be curious about. Actually, Alicia is going to be teaching for the next couple of weeks. She's doing a somewhat long-term sub position um, at her former school. And I'm, I don't know if she's deskless in there or not. You would think so because she was that her blog is the deskless classroom, but I haven't actually discussed with her if she's going to be able to be deskless because it's another teacher's room. Um, so I'm curious about that, but what, how a lot of teachers handle that is they will have their students, um, they'll have a clipboard for every student. And so if the students need to be writing down things, they can just grab a clipboard at the beginning of the class period and have that with them. Um, sometimes you might even have desks available around the room. And then if you're going to be doing, um, an activity that requires writing, students might go and grab it. Some teachers have really nifty seat back holders that you can pull, um, a clipboard out of, um, to write things down on. So yeah, I, clipboard, I think is really the best solution. Let's see, um, going over, so going over using SOMOS for the first time, Bella, I would say I'm 
here for any specific questions, but um, in just a general, uh, like what to do if you're teaching for the first time, I didn't come prepared with like my che a checklist of things to do. So if you have specific questions, ask them. And if not, um, a follow, uh, another resource, I just, I filmed it a couple of weeks ago, actually. It's um, unpacking the first unit. So it's me on a Loom video. So I've got my screen and I've got the plans open and I'm walking you through everything. So giving a little bit more explanation of like, what is this page? When it says, when it references this in the plans, where do you find that? And um, there was some video error that, has been a pain in my butt for two weeks and I finally figured it out today and I posted that video on YouTube but it's unlisted because I don't want students to find it um so I will drop that in the comments as well and that might be a really good tool it won't it doesn't it's not really instruction focused so um but it, it'll at least give you another perspective on um just on opening the material and you can hear my voice talking through all of it. So I think that might be helpful for you. Um, oh, thanks, Orlando. So start training yourself with our videos on YouTube. Yes. And the best place, because there are quite a few different trainings that we've done. If you go to the launch pad, which Megan shared, and we can share again, we have a launch pad and we have a, uh, <laughs> I'm, I ser I'm going to figure out the name of this thinking training. Um, I think it's the Soma Summer Challenge or Step Into Somos whatever it was that walks you through all the videos in a logical sequence. So that's going to be really helpful as well. And it comes with the opportunity for professional development credit hours, um, professional development hours or continuing education credits. Okay. So Francisca says, I'm sorry. It's my first time teaching. Don't be sorry, girl. Okay, I just bought so much. I'm teaching them 45 minutes a week. Can you explain a bit about storytelling? I like the idea of the kids making their own. Okay, so um, you say storytelling there, but I think that when you say, I like the idea of kids making your own, I think you're wondering about story asking. You'll hear us refer to it as TPRS, which is teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling, or we might just say story asking, and those refer to the exact same thing. TPRS was created by Blaine Ray, um, his company, um, it's TPRS Books, still does extensive training um, and really high quality training and in the method if you're looking for um, uh, more, more after I go through this. I also have a bunch of blog posts that are linked in the curriculum and that I can reference. But the basic idea behind it is that when you tell someone a story, you have all of the information. And so you're just laying it all out. When you ask a story, you have a general idea of where the story is going is, is, well, I should say, you might have a general idea of where the story is going to go, but you don't have, you haven't decided any details yet. And you're going to come up with that, those details with your class together. So you're going to imagine things. So this is something that uh, I mean, I started TPRS before I had kids. So I say like, this is actually something I do with my kids all the time, but I don't know if I would do it with my kids if I hadn't done TPRS first. So sometimes I think, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg, who knows? Um, but I'll, I'll be telling a story with my kids and um, we have, I, I always tell them these bedtime stories with Katrina, the kangaroo who makes an appearance in one of the flex units. And um, so I'll say, uh, um, okay, so have I ever told you the story about um, the time that Katrina um, took her first ballet class? And then I say, no. And I always say, yes, I already told you that story. And they say, no, you didn't. And so then I say, well, she went to her first ballet class. And when she got there, you will never believe who her teacher was. And they go, who? And I said, who do you think it was? And I don't actually know. I, I, I haven't come up with this ahead of time. I'm making this up on the spot. And so they'll say, um, they'll say, uh, well, they always say Cornelius because he's the bad guy. And so I'll say, no, it wasn't Cornelius. Cornelius was not the teacher. Um, and then they'll have to come up with another idea. And so uh, they might say, uh, I don't know, grandma. And I'm like, yes, grandma was, was Katrina's teacher. So then we roll with the story from there. 
So that is story asking. That's what you're doing with your classes. The only difference in the SOMOS curriculum is that I give you a script. So I give you a basic outline of what's going to happen in the story. And then you are just asking those specific details to your kids. So the story, for example, in unit two is um, there's a person who walks and they're walking to somewhere, but you're going to decide with your students where they're walking. And then they see someone and you don't know who they see ahead of time. You're going to decide that with your students. So they're walking and they see, who do you think they see? And your students might say, um, their friend. And you say, no, they don't see their friend. You don't have any idea. You're just making this up. And they say, and they say, oh, they see um, Britney Spears. Britney Spears is just always my go-to. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. They see Britney Spears. So you agree with it, the, um, with those details on this class. So that's story asking. And at the end, you have a story that's like totally yours. It's personal. It's amazing. I think story asking is the best. And also it's not for everyone. We've got the story builders. Okay. Um, Lisa, you'll be able to watch this in full once um, once the video is done. You'll be able to watch the recording. We're going to post it in this group and on YouTube. Let's see. Oh, yes, it's okay. Getting started tomorrow with CI. You're going to be awesome. And there's going to be good days and there's going to be hard days. Sometimes you'll feel on top of the world. Sometimes you'll feel like a total failure. But that is the case whether you're doing uh, comprehension-focused teaching or not. And just remember this group, we are always going to be here to support you. Um, our mentors are absolutely amazing. We want to celebrate your great days with you and we want to hold you on your hard days. So, um, so please um, be, be, uh, be ever present in this group and we're going to get through this year together. Um, oh, Paulino used um, in Luna Tus Manos and IB classes a lot. We should, we should talk about that, Paulino, um, about IB. Um, Oh, another day one. You guys, you're going to have a great day. I know it. I'm praying that over you. You're going to have a great day. Um, how to incorporate the podcast. So yeah, um, the new podcast. Um, actually, Sandra, I, I, mm, uh, I'm going to, we're going to make a post about that on Garbanzo Instagram, maybe on Garbanzo blog. I don't want to I feel like we already have so many things that you can pull in for SOMOS unit one, that when it comes to getting started, sometimes bringing in all of those extra things uh, makes it too overwhelming. So you don't need to bring in anything else. And if you want to bring in the Garbanzo Spanish podcast into teaching unit one, which totally makes sense because the first two episodes are about what animals say and then about the song Los Pollitos Season with an original version performed by Paulino and some of our other Garbanzo members. Um, I'll, I'll share some suggestions for that in a different spot just for the sake of um, keeping it a little bit simple. Yes, let's see, you can totally skip the music pieces. Or, um, so you said, I'm totally toned up, can't hear you. Or you can let your students do it too. Like you can just play the song. You don't have to sing it with them. Um, that's fine. And also you can skip them. Um, so there's no one right way to teach a song. Okay, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Hmm. Margarita said, I tried to click on the link for Corre, Corre, Corazon and it didn't work. Was it user error? Um, I'm sure it wasn't user error. So if, well, I guess if you clicked on the link and nothing happened, then maybe, I guess, or maybe that's a software problem, not user error, it's the software. It might be that there is a, um, the bad link. I know that we have, um, we have in the past updated the link to Corre, Corre, Corazon. So one thing you could do first is try re-downloading the plans from TPT and make sure you have the most up-to-date version. You can also check our update log to see when the last time that we updated it was and if that is more recent than the last time you downloaded. But if you have the most up-to-date version and the link isn't working, um, just email support and we will get right on that. Um, that's, uh, and we try to use a lot of authentic videos in the curriculum. And one of the problems that comes along with that is that videos, um, if they're not owned by us, they can get taken down at any time. So we try to stay on top of that, but um, it is an ongoing battle, particularly in unit five with all the bullfighting videos as you can imagine. 
So at what point during the lesson do you find it works best for middle schoolish to write target vocab in their dictionaries? Honestly, I, um, we, I would recommend really limiting note taking. Um, I would have my students do it at the very beginning of the unit. I really started doing that because it um, fit with an expectation in our school. We needed to be able to point to something to parents and say, this is what your kids have to know. And even though that's not how language acquisition works, um, we are not in control of what language is and isn't acquired. Um, we were going to be using those words so much that, that I knew that that was an expectation that students were probably going to be comfortable interpreting those words. So I had a dictionary page that I could always come back to. And so parents knew this is what my students are expected to know for this class. And if they're behind, this is what they need to catch up on. But I would have them do that at the beginning of the unit. You don't need to do that. You don't ever need to have your students take notes. Um, and during the unit, at some point, and my students might enjoy writing down the story. I think that's it's that's in the curriculum a few different times as part of an activity where students might write down the story. But not they they would never need to do that for the purpose of having a record or having notes. It would it would really just be um, either for enjoyment or um, because it's going to help with some activity that you're going to be doing in class. So the start of the unit, though, if you're going to do core vocab, I would have them write it down at the beginning of the unit, and those can be their notes. Carry on. Let's see. Okay, okay. Megan said that the Core Core Corazon link is working. So if you have the most up-to-date plans from TPT, it should be good. Um, let's see. Oh, Hunter, great question. So tips on using Somos for the Ed TPA. Actually, um, so I don't have a lot. Uh, I, there are a few things that I've pulled together and we have them in our help desk. We have an article about that. So if you, um, I can send you the link to that. So we have an article in our, um, in our, it's our knowledge base. It's linked on the blog. We call it help desk and we call it knowledge base, but it's on the ed TPA or ed pot. I don't even know how you say it. I only ever read it. Um, can't find the list of songs for Singing Ninja in the collab drive. Okay, so the Kanda Ninja is an activity. Again, you don't have to do it, but it's just something that my I did and my students loved. And um, Jennifer's trying to find the list of songs. So what I did for that was I just created the list of songs as we as the year went on and as we listened to songs in each unit. So like the song list for unit one was Los Poitos Dicen. And then by the time we got into week two, it was Corre Corre Corazon and Los Poitos Dicen. Um, I know other teachers have made song lists to pull from for the Singing Ninja. Um, I can have Heather um, send you a link for that if it still is in the collab drive. Um, and if not, I would say just build it as you go through the year. And then and we, I would also bring in songs like if I had students that... Um, came in and were like, this is my favorite song. Um, can we listen to it in class? Then I would add that to the class list as long as it was appropriate. Okay, let's see. I am going to, you can keep adding questions that you have um, in the comments. And otherwise, I'm going to jump back to this question list of submitted questions. Let's see. So um, we talked about assessment. So uh, someone asked, can you demonstrate how you do retelling or recreating of a story? And that one actually would be a little bit hard because there's so many different ways to do it. And there are all of the activities that, um, that I use to retell or recreate are explained in the plans. So for example, one activity, which is one of my favorites, but does take some training for students, um, is a blind retell. And so that's when it's an activity that I learned from Betsy Pathben, who was a colleague of mine in Alaska, a Japanese teacher. And for that, we would have a story, a, a version of the story um, projected on the board and students would be working in pairs. One student is looking at the board and actually reading the story. The other one is facing the student and not able to see what's on the board. And that student tries to retell the story from memory. Usually you would want students to have had a couple exposures of the story so that they would reasonably be able to do that. And then the student that's looking at the board is coaching them. And if they get stuck or if they say something wrong, 
then that student helps them um, by feeding them what the next few words are or corrects them or whatever. And it's just really important if you do that activity to let students know that um, the this is really about the student who's reading. So this is an opportunity for student who is facing the board reading to be um, looking closely at the words and comparing it to what they're hearing from the other students. So it's not actually about the student that's speaking. It's not a speaking quiz. It's uh, it's like a reading activity for the kid who's um, who's reading the board. And then they switch after a while and um, and go on. Some of my favorite retells are using drawings. So a really easy thing that you can do is you tell the story while students illustrate it. Um, they can draw a mural. They can draw a couple different story frames, but they're drawing it as you're telling it. And then you have them uh, just retell the story based on the pictures that they drew and they can retell it to whatever extent or whatever amount of detail they feel comfortable. So that might be word level things like chica, camina, escuela. They might put together some phrases or sentences. They might add a lot of details, whatever they're comfortable with. But so we don't assess speaking in someone's when I don't recommend it. Um, but there are a lot of opportunities for students to, um, to engage with output. Okay, so another, um, another uh, teacher asked, they said that they're starting with SOMOS for the first time, one, two, and honor Spanish three, each level starting with unit one for all three of them. How do I teach them and still honor the different levels or should I teach exactly the same? I would say for level one and level two, plan that it's probably going to be the same. Like I said earlier, level two, um, your second year students, they might bring in a broader range of vocabulary into the stories, um, but they're probably going to be working at, through the curriculum at about the same pace as your first year students. Your honor Spanish three, depending on um, what they've been doing for the last couple of years, might be able to move more quickly through the curriculum. And then what I would say is just look at each unit um, once you've spent a little bit of time with your students, so in unit one, um, maybe unit two, you'll have an idea of the words that your students know and don't know. And you can look at the rest of the units in the curriculum and say, oh, you know, unit four, the vocabulary is habla, quiere ser, toma. My students know all of those words and they know classes and like class titles and professions. So like, let's just skip that unit. We can go on to unit five. So you might be able to move um, to skip over some units if you feel like your students already have acquired the, the, the core structures for those units. Um, so for that, the third year, you might be able to move through things a little bit quickly or differently than your first two, but the first two, I think will be about the same. Someone asked if I can provide more information about what is in the SOMOS material. And I will share that video that I mentioned earlier where I unpack SOMOS one unit one. Um, where does someone obtain new SOM? So new SOM is not a complete curriculum. We are building it and you will be glad to know that we are working on a new unit of new SOM uh, original curriculum, um, which is really exciting. And that is from, you can get that from Teachers Pay Teachers or you can get it directly from us. So if your teacher, if your district does not work with Teachers Pay Teachers, some districts have bans on that, then we're happy to sell it to you directly. If you email info at comprehensibleclassroom.com, we can, um, for New Soam in particular, we have a units one through nine bundle that ha has the most complete uh, library of our new some resources. So I'd recommend getting that and it will be on sale this week during the back to school bonus sale up to 25% off. It's 25% off as long as you remember to use the coupon code. If you don't, then it's just 20%. Okay. So someone asked, let's see. Francisca said, apart from middle school, I teach fifth grade also 45 minutes a week. Can I recommend how to prepare them for SOMOS? Um, I don't provide, I don't have materials for elementary that is outside my area of expertise, although I do have some great recommendations for teachers to connect with. Um, for 45 minutes a day, um, fifth grade, I would say actually you can flex. Uh, I shouldn't use the word flex because we have SOMOS flex. You can use the SOMOS curriculum with fifth grade, some elements of it, um, especially the first couple of units. But what I would really do is I would say, um, get the uh, one word image um, 
imagination lab tool. That would be a really fun thing to do with your fifth graders. Do special person interviews with them. Um, so those would be really good starting points for those for those kiddos, especially since you're not seeing them very much. You're not going to be doing a ton of content um, throughout the year because you just are seeing them once a week for 45 minutes. So those would be two really great connecting activities uh, to spend a lot of time with in, in your year with them. Okay, so Beth asked about story asking. Yes, everything's in the target language. So questions and answers. Um, sometimes when you ask students to give you a detail, like you say, oh, who did they see? And they wanna say, they saw a plumber and they don't know how to say it in the target language. You might allow them to say it in your primary shared language and then you translate it into the target language and add it into the story. That way you might write it up on the board like um, the, the Spanish word and the English word, for example. And guidelines for deciding like, oh no, it wasn't this person. Um, sometimes it is just gut instinct that like, I'm like, that's gonna be super boring or that's gonna be super inappropriate um, or just, I think we can do better. And sometimes whatever suggestion they have, I know it's just not gonna be able to, uh, like I've read through the whole story script. I know where we want the story to go. And I know that whatever their suggestion is, isn't going to get us in the direction that we need to get going. So, um, yeah, uh, in the updated versions of the units and all the flex versions too, it gives some suggestions about the kinds of details to look for as well, which are helpful. Okay, let's see. Currently using Somos 1 with last year's Spanish 1 students. Should I use Somos 2 with them? No, if they're, if it's, um, if they were Spanish 1 in a traditional course last year, just stick with Somos 1 this year. If I was going to make an additional purchase, would you recommend Garbanzo? Well, that is a big question because I have no context for it, Lisi. It Garbanzo is an amazing tool. Um, I obviously am biased, but it like we have over 1,200 stories. Um, it will make your life easier if you have the systems in place at your school for your students to be using something like that. So Garbanzo, it's an online application where students all have accounts and you as the teacher are able to assign them lessons and monitor their progress. So um, if you have the premium subscription, it is fully integrated with Google Classroom, which makes sign up a total breeze. You just import your classes from Google Classroom. Um, but if your students don't have it, like if access to computer labs or like laptop carts or devices in general is difficult, then Garbanzo might not be a great tool for you. Um, that is like the go-to thing for sub days for anyone that has reliable device access for their students. And there's just so much to supplement each unit with. So I'd love to talk through you with that a little bit more. If you email, um, or actually ask in the teaching with Garbanzo app Facebook group and give us a little bit more context, context for your situation. Um, and we'd be happy, happy to help you determine whether Garbanzo is a great tool for a great fit for you or not. Let's see, um, co-teaching a class with 40 to 55 kiddos, oh my word, yeah. Okay, so Nicole, this is, I love your question. I feel like when we tried, we had confident students participate, but worried we couldn't connect with all the students during some of the activities because of the size of the class. Yeah, that's totally valid. I mean, yeah. Um, so your co-teaching, which is interesting, um, I would still think you would need I mean, even when you're co-teaching in class, you can't usually have two totally different things going on in the room. So I'm imagining that at least for some of the class, there's one person teaching all of those kids and how do you break them up? That's, um, Nicole, I'd like to think about that a little bit more. And maybe if you could um, either email info at comprehensibleclassroom.com or just let me come back to your question. Um, after this is over, because that is a really interesting, I mean, I have my like canned responses about what to do, but the, the size of the class, you're right. I mean, just looking into their eyes and checking for comprehension. It, I mean, there's, you're right. There's kids that will just get lost in that big of a group. So um, yeah, I'd like to think through that a little bit more. Let's see. Um, some of the difference in new some, uh, obviously it's French. Somos is Spanish. We do some different cultural stuff in Newsom. So um, we have 
culture that is specific to Spanish-speaking countries in Somos, and the culture in Nusom is specific to Francophone countries. Let's see, a lot of the questions from that were submitted ahead of time are um, questions that I can just send the folks um, links. So I can send links to scope and sequence. I can send links to curriculum maps. Let's see, the biggest, yeah, that, that really common question, it's um, a lot of folks are just wondering um, what to do with the kids that have had a year of traditional teaching. And again, we just recommend start them with almost one unit one. Let's see. First day fun. How do we show them it's going to be a fun class? Follow the suggested lesson plans in Somos 1, Unit 1, and it will be a fun class. <laughs> it is. I love the start of the school year because um, it's just like an adrenaline rush for teachers that go in. And I, some people have a bad experience the first day. So I don't want you to feel like if you have a bad first day that it's just you. That I mean, there's so many factors. It, it's not a guarantee you're going to have a great first day, but for the most part, folks go in the first day and students love the class because it's different than anything that they've ever experienced. And it's my hope that you'll have many of those days throughout the school year. So just follow the suggested plans. And if something sounds really not fun to you, you can skip it, but it probably is fun. Okay, let's see. I think... Oh, level two question, how to blend a class of, we had Somos unit one, units one through 10 last year, and we had the book. Ooh, that is difficult. So you have students um, coming from different teachers. One teacher was using Somos, one teacher was teaching traditional. Now they're all in the same Spanish two class together. I would recommend starting with card talk, which is the first activity in Somos two unit one. Um, like where did you go last summer and special person interview, because that is going to give you a chance to um, use language that all students are probably a bit familiar with, you know, if they had level one, we had the book in level one, um, they probably know how to talk about their age and their likes and dislikes that kind of a thing so it kind of levels the playing field and it allows you an opportunity to assess what language students in the two different groups have acquired and also will serve to give you kind of a common uh, a common uh, foundation of language that you all share and can move forward with. And then at that point, you'll um, if you spend a little time with those activities, you can decide which unit would be the next one to continue on with if your level two, if your traditional kiddos could handle um, Somos one unit 11, or if you need to do some other stuff before then. I wouldn't, uh, it, someone asked, will this work with fifth graders? It can work with fifth graders. The only, the only area of trouble really is that the topics were chosen with middle and high schoolers in mind. The topical background knowledge that is assumed for students is that of like, what would a middle school student probably know about? Like what kinds of topics and things and facts about the world? And then also cognates are a big part of the curriculum. Um, there's a lot of tools to help students develop the skill of being able to interpret cognates, um, but definitely fifth graders are going to have a harder time. Um, obviously, students are at a whole range of reading levels, um, but that's going to be another area that fifth graders are going to struggle in. So teachers use it. I would recommend if you're using it with fifth graders, just don't do as much with the culture. Focus more on just the stories in each unit. And if C is, CI isn't your training, you've come to the right place. We have a full training department run by Alicia Cardenas, who is going to be teaching for the next couple of weeks, which is so exciting and I'm super jealous. Um, and we have mentors here in the group. We have tons of resources that we can share with you to help get you um, on your way. So it's okay. We will be your training. That's what we're here for. Um, and how do we fit the SOMOS curriculum with district standards that don't align in topic with SOMOS? Great question. Need to assess using predetermined standards. That one um, is gonna be context specific, of course, but you can email info at comprehensibleclassroom.com. Be happy to take a look and see if we can help you figure that out. Um, side note, also in our knowledge base or help desk, we have a bunch of articles now about aligning state standards, state standards with SOMOS. So we have those for California, Virginia, New York, Texas, Georgia, a few other states maybe. Um, and if you need 
so much to be aligned with your state standards, email us at info at and we'd be happy to help you with that as well. Um, someone asked about finding a video for Katie Stan Los Poitas that matches the Somos lyrics. Um, I need a video, not audio. So ooh, I don't have a video that goes along with them exactly. Um, I just have the audio, but it is, I mean, it's really easy to type up a second set of lyrics to match a video if that's what you want to share with your students. Um, yeah. Advice for traditional teacher transitioning to for the first time is almost read the lesson plans and click the links. So just go through, I walk you through everything in the lesson plans as you have questions and you will um, ask in the SOMOS collaboration group and our mentors are going to help you. So anything that you need clarification on, anything that seems scary, anything that seems confusing, anything at all, ask in the collab group. But other than that, just follow the lesson plans, click the links, and we'll get you through this. Um, there's tests sometimes at the end of units, sometimes um, within the units, not tests really, they're assessments, short assessments, assessing specific skills, reading, listening, and writing, and those are all embedded in units. And that is, okay, um, I'm actually going to uh, ask one last question and then I'm going to go get my kids to bed. So are students going to be reluctant to transfer from regular teaching to CI? This is my first year using SOMOS and doing CI. Some kids are, some kids aren't. Kid, students, um, like all of us in every area of our lives, have expectations. And um, sometimes those expectations are established because they already had a language class and they have an idea of what a language class should look like. They might have an idea of what a language class should look like because they know what all of their other classes look like and they think that language class should look like look, should look the same. They might have seen a clip in a movie or somewhere of language class. They might have heard their parents talking about language class. So they're going to have some idea of what language class should look like, whether or not they've had personal experience in one. And if you launch into your first day and their experience in your class doesn't match with their expectation of what their experience was going to be like in their class. Sometimes that's a relief. Sometimes they're like, wow, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> like I thought it was going to be this terrible thing. And now it's this. Um, that's great. Sometimes, um, and in particular, you'll, you might find students that um, are very studious, that are good at being students and doing the school thing. And they like things to be academic and to feel rigorous. They'll say, this class is too easy. This teacher is silly. They're doing this word. I'm not learning anything. Maybe they aren't learning anything. They're acquiring things and it's different. And sometimes students really do give you pushback on that. And that's something that you'll need to tackle just on an individual basis. Sometimes students are fine, but parents are freaking out. Sometimes students and parents freak out together on you. And um, the best thing to do for that is to uh, listen to them, hear their concerns, um, invite them to, uh, consider a different under to, to develop a different understanding about, um, language acquisition. If you need help coming up with some kind of an elevator pitch, or how do you present this to students or to parents that this is why my class looks different. Um, we would love to help you with that. And any specific concern that a parent brings up, please bring it up in the SOMOS collaboration group. Um, I, I should mention, I, I shared, a. Last week, um, Jillian Starr teaching, she's just a teacher on Instagram. I think she teaches elementary. She shared a list of concern uh, of things to consider when sharing anything online when you're a teacher. And one of the things that she said is that even when you are a teacher who um, who comes, for example, to a private Facebook group and you don't mention anybody by name, but you say like, I have a parent who says this. There is a place in the, in, there is the possibility that it exists out there that you could get in trouble for that. You probably wouldn't ever, but that exists. So just be careful whenever you're posting anything publicly in the group. And if you have any question or concern about that, email us directly and keep it off social media. Um, but we will get you the help that you need and helping you to answer those questions. Um, and yeah, whether it's me or Alicia or our mentors, um, we will, we will, um, we'll support you through all of that. 
So, um, okay, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna call it. So um, I hope that you have a great afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. I hope that you have the best week ever. If tomorrow is your first day and you are planning to jump into the plans, um, I wish you the best first day ever. You are going to do amazing. I hope that you will come back to the group and you will share with us how your day goes. And even if it doesn't go well, that's okay. Come and we will, um, we will hold you up and we will help you get, um, get through to day two. Um, but this school year is going to be wonderful. We're going to be with you every step of the way. And we're going to be, uh, continuing to do some more training specifically geared toward, um, toward teachers that are starting for the first time. So look for announcements coming soon. And if there's anything that you don't have that you need for the coming year, back to school bonus sale is this week, Tuesday, and Wednesday, save up to 25%. The link is on my blog. Have a wonderful evening. Toodaloo.